Today in the news, AMD finally joins the fray, and rumors about Nvidia's next monster GPU seems a little far-fetched. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. When it comes to gaming GPUs, the company did a pretty amazing job with its comeback against Nvidia. I mean, with RDNA 1, the 5700 XT slid right in between the 2070 and 2070 Super in terms of performance, and it did so at $100 cheaper. As for the new 6000 series, they were able to compete across the board in terms of performance. <clears throat> Let's not talk about the 6500 XT. Anyways, the 6900 XT was, and I guess still is, a worthy competitor to the RTX 3090. But there's one area where Nvidia kept the crown over the two generations, and another area where, well, AMD doesn't compete at all. The first area is ray tracing. AMD did add support for the technology here, but the performance is, well, it's not really there. It's about half the performance of an Nvidia GPU. The second technology is machine learning. Nvidia GPUs have had a dedicated part of the chip just for that. And thanks to the Tensor Cores, they have features like DLDSR, DLAA, and of course DLSS, the upscaler that reigns over all upscaling technologies right now. AMD GPUs, well, they don't have any kind of silicon reserved for machine learning. So their upscaling technology, aka FSR, relies on traditional upscaling techniques, which pale in comparison to DLSS. Well, it looks like things are about to change. Leaker extraordinaire, Graymon55 over on Twitter, and I swear this guy has been on point with his leaks in the past, just tweeted some juicy information about Navi 3X, aka the RX 7000 series. Chiplet design, we already knew Knew that from previous AMD patent and leaks. 3D Infinity Cache, once again, we've explored AMD's patents and we've seen that the 3D Infinity Cache would also act as a bridge between two chiplets. And lastly, machine learning chip. So it looks like AMD doesn't want to stay behind on this. Now, we don't know how AMD plans on implementing this. They basically have three options. One is to add a separate machine learning chiplet, kind of like what AMD did on Zen 2 or Epic processors. The second one would be to add the machine learning silicon to the 3D interconnect that houses the Infinity Cache. And the third option would be to simply have it on the die itself, like Nvidia does. Personally, I lean on the third option and then the first. My reasoning is that Navi 33 is supposedly a monolithic die, unlike Navi 31 and 32. So having a 3D memory interconnect strictly for cache makes no sense. As for the chiplet, it could work, but it would increase costs on what is supposed to be a mid to high end GPU. Anyways, at this point, it's all speculations, but it's nice to see that AMD is actually getting in the game. I mean, at this point, even Intel will have a GPU with machine learning and uh, deep learning upscaling before AMD. That's thanks to their XMX engine and XESS. Let me know what you guys think of all this down below. Then we got Nvidia in the news. Ever since they've been manufacturing graphics processors, the company always had some pretty massive GPUs. And I'm not talking about the entire card, but rather I'm talking about the GPU dies themselves. The biggest one so far was the 2080 Ti at 754 millimeters squared. If we look at the professional slash data center side of things, the biggest GPU chip currently in production is 826 millimeters squared. That's what is on the Ampere based GA100 chip. Well, according to leaker Copite 7 kimi over on Twitter, GH100 has a huge single die of slightly less than a thousand millimeters squared. <sighs> Now, in case you didn't know, GH100 is the next generation of data center grade GPUs based on the Hopper architecture. At 1000 millimeters squared or a little less, it's a bit far-fetched and definitely was sensationalized in the news. That's because chip manufacturing has something called a reticle limit, which is basically the size limit of a single die on a wafer using normal EUV manufacturing. That limit is right now at 858 millimeters squared. And even if if they were to manufacture it at that size, the yields would be abysmal. 
For example, GA100, the Ampere Monster, has to be limited to 108 of its 128 SMs because of yield issues. Anyways, all that to say that a thousand millimeters squared is probably wrong. Copite did correct himself, bringing that down to 900 millimeters squared, but even that seems a little out of the boundaries of uh, current CPU manufacturing. So yeah, Cobite has some uh, explaining to do here. At least you and I learned some fun facts about GPU manufacturing. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty. I'm losing my voice and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.